today we are going to look at how we can effectively deal with these negative psychological arousals. We are going to discuss and see how we can reframe the challenges that COVID-19 presents to opportunities for sustainable development, to opportunities to redevelop ourselves and realign ourselves in light of the current situation. With us here, we have very um, seasoned and experienced professionals in the psychology profession. Um, the first of them is Professor Elizabeth Omotunde Ebuchuku, who happens to be the president of Counseling Association of Nigeria, Kason. She is going to take us for the next 10 minutes to tell us um, how we can manage uh, psychological emotions at this uh, time of need. Um, thereafter, we are going to have Dr. Mrs. Marie Okocha uh, from Federal University of Petroleum Resources. Footbridge is also going to speak to us on that. On the sideline of this, we um, have two distinguished personalities all the way in the United States of America. We have Dr. Igwebuike Michael Wese who is uh, a psychologist and also who is um, the CEO and the founder of Hope for Now International. Um, Hope for Now International is based in the US but doing work in Nigeria and in Africa. Um, they are concerned about how they will improve the lives of people with disabilities. We also have Honorable Olamide David Salabi all the way in New Jersey. She's also going to be on the sideline to make inputs. Well, without spending much time, we are going to um, yield the platform to Professor Elizabeth Omotunde Ebuchuku, uh, the president of Carson. Please, um, you have uh, 10 minutes to tell us how we can manage this situation that we find ourselves in. Thank you very much, Prof. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Um, we can hear you, Prof. Yes, I was. I was trying to set up my my um, your slides. Okay. My slides. Yes. What is? Uh, yes. Are you see, Can you see it now? Yes, I'm seeing your slide, Prof. Okay. Let me quickly start. Sorry. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank uh, you, Christine, for inviting me to give this talk today on the sustainable adaptive behavior to COVID-19. Like you rightly said, my name is uh, Professor Elizabeth Omotunde Ebochuku. I'm the current president of Counseling Association of Nigeria, CASON, and uh, I'm also a professor of counseling psychology in the University of Benin. As a licensed professional counselors, we know that there is tremendous, in this tremendous time, that we need to help people because of what we are going through in the public. There is no doubt that um, we are in tougher times, but we thank God that Nigerians believe in God. And because we believe in God, we shall be victorious at the end. It's true we've lost loved ones taken by this disease, but we remember them with love and kindness they have left behind. May their souls rest in peace. Now, Counseling Association of Nigeria, Kasson, is an association recognized to give essential counsel psychological counseling support to Nigerians. We have many functions we give. But among these functions is to provide them with standard competence, practice, and conditions among our professions. We also organize and conduct seminars. We train our members to become chartered professional uh, psychologists. And then we also train them both in management and administration of counseling in public and private 
So what is happening now is, is really devastating, as we know, since uh, 2019. But because Africa did not take notes on time and take proper care, that's why we are in the mess we uh, found ourselves now. However, we know that as of yesterday, we have lost 44 people. We have a total number of 1,532 cases. We pray it stops there. Now, I've been told to talk about sustainable adaptive behavior. What is adaptive behavior? One we want to know is the collection of conceptual, social, and practical skills. They said, host oh, asked me to start my video. I thought I've started my video. Yes, we have your video. Go ahead. Okay. Adaptive yes. skills. Now, let us talk about behavior because we cannot talk about uh, sustainable, adaptive, behavior without talking about personality because they make, they go hand in hand. We know that personality is also referred to as the pattern, feelings of behavior, relative enduring patterns of thought and feelings of behavior. So it means therefore that when we talk of adaptive behavior of COVID-19, we are really talking about the correct reaction of people to the coronavirus, how we can handle it psychologically. We know in Nigeria, I, um, you will pardon me because I'm going to now talk from the Carson's view, because in Nigeria, we Carson members have also been working to curtail this uh, coronavirus. We know about the face masks and the physical distance. We are all aware of that. We, uh, we do small groups in Kasson where we break them into zones and people go to talk and educate. We also have what we call social distancing. You know, social isolation is a risk factor for us in counseling because it leads to anxiety, depression, uh, phobic, fear but that is what we need at this time so we advise individuals who do not have access unfortunately most individuals don't have access to technology but we advise them to still connect to significant others for emotional and uh, support we have uh, in Kasson we also have what we call holding space in this, we gather groups together, NGOs, religious organization, women organization, community development, and uh, we have them in the 36 states plus FCT. We have posters, which unfortunately I wouldn't have time to discuss with you because uh, of time. We also are involved in introductory technology. In Carson, at the moment, we have three main platforms. In addition, each state has its own platform where we send motivational messages from time to time to members. And then, when it comes to children, we are very, 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 very concerned with our, of our children. We cannot ignore the growing risk that our children are facing with school clothes and communities in lockdown. Online sexual ex uh, exploration is to potentially harmful and violent context uh, uh, keep our children at greater risk, even in the cyber bullying. Our children now witness domestic violence and abuse. Our girls are in danger of increased pregnancy and dropout. Counselors. As counselors, we are concerned, and of course, we are educating the populace over this. Now, anxiety is another problem that this has brought up. How do we manage the anxiety that COVID-19 has brought up? Um, some factors that clients can control, like we encourage them to do regular exercises. We uh, advise them to meet with friends and loved ones 
uh, during uh, over visual perform platforms we advise them to practice personal hygiene and limit the time they spend in markets or supermarkets or in gardens or with large area of in gardens where there are large people in addition to all this we also teach unfortunately I, I may not be able to go into details what we do like uh, we teach stress management techniques uh, because you are at home what you do during uh, when you are stressed up staying at home one is easily stressed up so we we have problems uh, couples have problems with infertility and childlessness we have problems we need inadequate finance of course dependents and households are also they are, have their problems we also teach now um, breathing exercises we encourage them to play to take part in physical games even games like ludos and things they help at this time we discover that many of our nigerians are in a state of denial they don't even believe that there is this COVID-19 or there is coronavirus. Some deny it that no, it's in Abuja, it's in Lagos, it's not here. But we know what has happened recently in Kanu, and it is alarming. So we, we are encouraging them that denial, which is a defense mechanism, should stop, and they should know that Carson or counselors are here with skills to help. In conclusion, therefore, we have many counseling skills like i've mentioned some before that we can use to help we have telephone numbers in the platforms that i just skipped unfortunately i should have taken down the numbers where these people that i need can call so that we can address them and assist them as we can we also ask our state government they have been supporting but they should give more support to the citizens, to the local government areas, to the market women, and smaller groups. Unfortunately, Carson, we don't have money. We, we would have given out money too, but in most of the states, they were able to give out um, face cap, they were able to give out face mask, and but we couldn't give food. Finally, I want to encourage all counseling professionals to take part in um, in prevention measures in pre to prevent COVID-19 so that it does not expand further in our nation because prevention is one of the physiological uh, philosophical cornerstone of counseling. Let us all stay safe and obey government regulations. Thank you for listening. Um, Dr. Paul, I think I'm done. Thank if you, you are sir. still hearing me, uh, I hope I wasn't too fast in my talking. Professor, you did very well. Thank you very much, Prof. Um, okay. Very well. I see that Dr. Ibodu Kenwe says online. Uh, Dr. Mrs. Mario Kocha, she online. Yes. Um, I also see that Honorable Talavi is online. Um, we'll go straight to hear from Dr. Um, Mrs. Maria Okocha. Thereafter, we'll have the two inputs, and there's, there are a lot of questions streaming in so that we'll be able to address, uh, answer most of the questions that are coming in. Um, so many well, we'll try, we'll try our best. The ones and, we can, uh, we'll try. For that presentation, Dr. Mrs. Maria Okocha, let's have you. Thank you very much, Dr. Paul Abolo. Um, my prof has spoken. That's my mentor. Um, the coronavirus pandemic has brought about a significant amount of fear, anxiety, panic, depression, and denial. We know that. And this seems to have created hopelessness, helplessness, despair, and apathy to so many. I mean, this is based on human exceptionalities. We know that some people with the incoming of COVID-19, they swung into action 
They made donations. Some people volunteered. Some of them went into researches to see what they could do. Some went on air to give out their own um, jingles to help people. Yes, there were some who felt unconcerned about the virus. There is no doubt that this, the presence of coronavirus in Nigeria is disturbing and it is also threatening. And because it is disturbing and threatening, so many people would have had different emotional challenges. Agreed that social media played vital roles in disseminating information. They helped to clarify issues. But they also was in the situation because they came up with all sorts. And this, I know when people uh, make issues. Now our concern is that emotional reactions may possibly affect the goal of stopping the spread of coronavirus. But people will come with some disbelief about emotional, uh, uh, about the coronavirus. I heard the prof saying that some are in denial. Yes, a lot more are in denial about it. In Delta State here, they will tell you that as much as you take kai kai and root, nothing will happen to you. Coronavirus is not in Delta State and it will not come. Even when there were cases of uh, coronavirus in De Delta State, they said it is just politics. So we will be looking at the impact of these emotional behaviors on the emergency systems that have been put in place for sustainable adaptation. Now, what are these emergency systems? Stay at home, stay safe, Stay informed, wash your hands, use face mask, avoid touching your face. One will wonder why anybody will have a problem with this. All of these measures are concerned with personal well being and safety. It implies that you must be cautious about your safety. It admonishes you to be the ultimate, uh, to be ultimately responsible for your safety. It tells you that you have a responsibility to yourself to keep yourself safe. So tell me why on earth anybody will have a problem, problem with it. The reason why there is a problem with it is due to our in the weather, the weather. Yes, Dr. Kocha, we are losing you. We can hear you. Okay, I think um, what we might do is uh, Dr. Wese, can you just um, uh, give us a and then we'll get back to Dr. Okocha. It means we give. Dr. Igwe Bike Wese, are you there? Um, I'm trying to get in. I'm, okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, are you able to see my video? Um, no. Now yes, 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 yes. Okay, so, okay, good. Thank you very much. So, uh, so you're able to hear me, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, uh, Doctor, we say hold on one moment. Let's see uh, how we're doing at the other end. Okay. It's not good. Doctor, we say go ahead, please. All right. I mean, um, to give thank you very much, Doctor Bolo, um, Ecologistics, Pristine. 
Uh, what a wonderful honor to be here with you and just to give my two cents on uh, the group, the role of therapists in the area of this um, uh, COVID-19. Um, it's an honor. I listened to um, the president who just spoke. That was a wonderful um, assessment on how we look at it. Um, uh, because fear, anxiety, panic, and depression is really what is happening at this time. And then um, I looked at the area of denial and I said to myself, I would have substituted that with trauma because trauma is another huge area that um, encompasses all these aspects that we are talking about because trauma is the key thing that is going to is like a hurricane. When a hurricane comes and strikes, it strikes just like that. But the aftermath of hurricane, it's really the issue about the effects of what affects all of us and our activities of daily living. So trauma is very huge here. And that's where the um, counselors come in. That's where these therapists come in. And the area that we're in now is very challenging. In the United States here, it's uh, as soon as it happened, because when Mrs. Uh, the president was speaking, uh, the, what came to my mind immediately was, it's not, the issue is not the populace. The issue is about the government. We know what the issues are. We know what anxiety does. We know what this happened, but how are we alleviating their suffering? What are we doing right away? Over here in the United States, uh, the Therapist Association and all these organizations swung into action with the government, in a way partnering with them, ensuring that the people themselves receive adequate services. So it's not even enough talking to the populace themselves. They have a unique problem, which is something that is not, and I sympathize. But at this point, I feel that the, the association, and I'm very encouraged, I never knew there was actually an association for, for counselors, which is very good, and therapists. They have different types of associations, but they should liaise and work with the government at this point. The government at this point, these are government are human beings. Most times they don't know what to do. They have an idea, okay. but they don't know what to do in terms of actually doing the things. But therapists, are, we are the professionals. So it's important that we begin to advise them. Here in the United States, they took steps, Medicaid system, which you, Dr. Bolo, know a lot about it, and they, they relaxed a lot of things in order for them to bring direct service to the populace. This was, and they, they did a lot of legislation. This was brought about by the association, different organizations so just swung into action to do that. It wasn't really the government that actually did that because we expect the government to do this, do that, do that. They have no idea what they do. It's actually these associations that come in on behalf of the populace. So I'm going to spend time talking about what depression does and um, Ms. Debojuku seems to have covered that. But the main issue is that months from now, years from now, Trauma is in the air. That's really what has to be focused on. No much as to denial because we have our lifestyle. Uh, if you call it denial, that's fine. Over here in the US, we saw the same thing well, in denial as well. I mean, some people, our president was in denial because I thought it was a fluke, but the reality is there. This is, so that's the lifestyle of human beings. So, but we need to get past that and say to us, so this association that you set up is very good, but we need to liaise with the government in order for steps to be taken and to say, these are therapists. Over here, we're using um, tele, uh, we call it telemedicine right now, in which uh, like the Zoom we're using now, you need to be reaching to people at this time. It's not enough to be saying, wash your hands, do this. No, no. We, we know the effects of stress, but uh, that's what I can say at this point. And I hope uh, I just wanted to contribute my Thank three you. cents on it. And it's a very excellent subject because um, emotional uh, imbalance is one thing that we suffer from. And as you know, is part of uh, what causes silent pain in us as individuals. Yes. 
Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Igwebike uh, Wese. Uh, you, you said that uh, most from now we're going to go through uh, a lot of trauma. Am I correct? Psychological trauma. What about economic, what about economic trauma? People are going to go through economic trauma as well. I think we have Dr. Mrs. Uh, Maria Okocha back online list so that she can complete her presentation before we have um, Honorable um, Olamide uh, David Salabile. Um, switch over to Dr. Mrs. Mario Kocha. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mike. Um, I was talking about why somebody will have emotional issues because you were asked to wash your hand. Um, stay at home, stay safe. There are several reasons why people have emotional problems as regards that. One is thinking about jobs, one is thinking about businesses, one is thinking about academic pro uh, program. Your plans are thwarted and you are frustrated a lot of people get irritated by the issues at hand and they're not getting direct and correct he has talked about anxiety he has talked about that these are some of the uh, negative emotions that people have all of these negative emotions are sculpted from the survival pressures that people have had to go through. So they don't believe in the existence of the virus. They don't see any need for collective responsibility. They may have lost sensitivity because their pains have become so much. And so it transcends into emotionless attitude. And so they resist. So this affects the ability to process information accurately and understand the reason for the emergency systems. So what do they do? They sit down, they blame the government, they blame the, the, the state, but these are sacrifices that all of us must be engaged in. Now let us look at sustainable adapt, uh, adaptive emotional behaviors that will help us to overcome this coronavirus issue. The first step, I have them in steps. There are five steps. Let people get to know that there is actually direct all attentions to the impact of this coronavirus on humans. How do you do that? a point where your your immunity system for anxiety control will be broken down such that that you cannot even handle any problem uh, for yourself to but a lot more need to be done i want to talk about the palliatives a lot of people are suffering they are hungry and so they have, they have this agitation. But if we want to solve this problem, we can sustain it by building into behaviors positive emotions. And it is only when we are able to build in positive emotions that people will begin to see it as our thing. Now, I talk about the governor of Cross River State. He is my man anytime. He gave ownership to his people. He told them, come, we have problems. I know I may not be able to pay more than 30000 but if you need a job, come. What I can afford is 30000 That, in a way, is giving the people some palliatives and making them They produce people are brought 
brought into the system and made to understand why they should, they would develop positive uh, emotions. And then in developing positive emotions, the government no concerned about it. They should let the people feel that they are concerned. They should let the people know that I love you. Sometimes I need the last, the last, uh, uh, um, um, the last um, outing of the president was very beautiful. Even when he was insisting on what should be done, he, he, he brought it home. He touched on the emotions of people. And I bet you people are ready to, to continue with the lockup because he touched where he should touch. So the effect of stopping uh, coronavirus with good emotional problems is that we should let the people be part of it. We should give ownership to the people. Now I can tell you that the issues of this coronavirus is such that oh, it's such that they must develop powerful perception so that they will overcome their fears, their panics. They should refuse to accumulate unwanted amount of fear, panic, and anxiety. And that is where they have been having problems. Because once you accumulate such, uh, such anxiety, All right. Um, there will be pressure and you will not be able to remain strong to be able to face the coronavirus in this coronavirus. Dr. Mrs. Okocha, we, are, we lose you, we get you on and off. Um, we may have to proceed to the next page. And then during the question and answers, we hope your internet connectivity will be better. But I got so many very interesting things from your presentation. Uh, I actually learned something new here, uh, which talks about um, refusing to accumulate fear and panic, which means that people can actually accumulate fear and, and panic. I also learned something very interesting about uh, breaking down the immunity system for anxiety control. Uh, that is interesting, but uh, we're going to get to the question and answers shortly, but let's hear from Honorable Olamide uh, David Salabi, all the way from New Jersey, Newark, New Jersey. Uh, Honorable, can we get your input for two to three minutes? Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, you can hear you. Okay, all right. So thank you, Dr. Folo, for this platform and all the doctors that spoke. I am coming from an outsider's point of view. I'm not a medical doctor, but uh, I will tell you, uh, we need to have more focus on the emotional state of people at this point. You know, everyone is doing giveaways. Everyone is giving food, but people are scared. People are really, really scared. You know, I live in the United States and I will tell you, a lot of people have lost their jobs. And even though the, you know, the government is giving all this um, uh, stimulus package and everything, people are still scared. Now let's take it to Nigeria where um, after this whole thing, some people will not be able to start their businesses again. I don't see the government being able to give that resources to millions of Nigerians. They just, they just don't have the money to do that. So people are already thinking about this and they are, they are, they are scared. They, are, they have anxiety issues. So we need to talk about this. We need to let them know that it's okay to have all these fears, but um, we, we, they, how can we help you? So there's, there needs to be more discussion about this, like what Dr. Bolo and the doctors are doing now. This is a very nice platform. We need to have more of this on the national level. Um, like Dr. Okocha said, I didn't watch the president's um, um, 
uh, speech, but if that's very nice of him to talk about the mental state of people. People are anxious, and the suicide rate is going to increase. So how can we how can we let people know that it's okay? You know, to feel all these feelings is about having discussion. Let's have promotions on TV that tells people it's okay to have your mental uh, state of mind not in a right state right now. We understand what you're feeling, but reach out to other people, talk about it, and know that there is always a, a light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable uh, Kalabi. Um, now we are going to take some questions because we have about 10 more minutes to round up um, this meeting. Um, the questions are going to be projected on the screen and um, we'll read it out and then find who is going to give us the best answer to the question. Uh, question number one. Uh, let's see. Question number one. Let's see the screen. What counseling skills would be appropriate in helping people living in denial? Uh, this question is from Tonia Mola Roslin. She wants to know what counseling skills will be appropriate in helping people living in denial. Um, Dr. Mrs. Okocha will take that question. Let's get the next question. Please write it down. Dr. Mrs. Okocha will take the question, what counseling skills will people living in denial uh, be given. Uh, Rosalind also asked again, yeah, okay, that's Rosalind, what comes with them? The anonymous question that says, we are people of faith in Nigeria. How do you deal with faith and denial? How do you deal with faith and denial? We are people of faith. Um, possibly Dr. Ikubikim uh, Wese will take that question. We are people of faith in Nigeria. How do you deal with faith and denial? Let's get the next question. The next question uh, goes to Professor Mrs. Uh, it says, what is the relationship between personality and behavior? Um, what is the relationship between personality and behavior? So I, I might like to expand this a little bit. What is the relationship between our personality as a nation, as Nigerians, and the way we behave, and how we adapt this to the current COVID-19 situation and the containment measures in Nigeria. So we might need to expand that a little bit, looking at the personality of, of the people uh, as Nigerians or as individuals. Uh, we have one more question, uh, and one more question comes from Ibochuku. This question is from Mike. We see that the Canprof Ingochuku be allowed to share the phone numbers to get in touch with our members. Prof Ingochuku, they need to know if you can share your phone numbers or your website or how they can reach you with members. I know where this is going to. This is going to one of the things that um, we strongly advocate. We strongly advocate for online counseling at this time where people can call on um, hotlines and then they can get some counseling. Um, so, uh, Prof, you will answer that question. Let's start with the first question that was directed at um, Dr. Mrs. Okocha. What counseling skills would be appropriate in helping people living in denial? Cognitive restructuring. They have to restructure their thinking pattern. And you do this by getting them to understand the reality of the situation. It is after they have gotten to understand the reality of the situation that they will begin to get their mindset towards thinking more rationally. Thank you. Thank you. So you mean that we have to get the people to understand the reality of the situation. Of the situation. Wow. So um, there is something I work with under uh, artificial intelligence. 
Uh, and that has been a guiding principle for me uh, all my life since I got in touch with appreciative intelligence. I know you are an expert in emotional intelligence, but for appreciative intelligence, what we do is that we search for the good in every situation. We look for the good even in bad situations. So what's the good that can come out of uh, the situation in like this? Uh, we keep trying to to make a list of the good that has come out of COVID-19. Um, for me, um, if you have that sense of urgency here, I have to wake up and I'm in a hurry, I need to do this, this. So I'm a little bit more relaxed, number one. Number two, um, I see families that actually never had dinner together. Because of the lockdown, they have more time and they can have dinner with their children. Um, I also see, um, a situation where people have time with themselves to discover themselves and that people have time to um, study. So uh, I'm not a psychologist like you guys, but I think that um, I don't know if that fits into what you talked about the cognitive um, structure. Uh, yes, when, when, when you have done this, you are going to put before that person that there is a purpose for anything that happens in life. This one is happening, there is a reason. If it is not true, then what, why are people dying? If it is not true, why? So the person needs to understand that this, this COVID-19 we are talking about is in reality. What denial does for them is to give them the leisure of living their normal routine life. And that's what they want. So they come up with all sorts of, all sorts of uh, false stories, distractions, so that they will have their way. So you pull them back and let them see the reality of the situation. Beautiful. Thank you so much. So, uh, I don't know if um, Professor Emo Chuku is there. Um, Professor Emo Chuku, are you there? Yeah, Professor I was trying. I'm here, I'm here. Thank you. Thank you. I'll get back to you. On, your, on the question that you're going to answer, and I'm going to add a little bit on it about what Dr. Mifisukosha just said, but let's hear from the prof. Yeah. Now, where the question asks is the relationship between personality and behavior. And you went for that to say what is the relationship between personality of the Nigerian populace and our behavior. Especially now, you, in the time of COVID-19. Especially in the time of COVID-19. You know, um, Nigerians are resilient people, really. We are resilient people. And when we talk of personality, what is our personality? We are strong people. And um, when this COVID-19 came in, we didn't even accept it. That's another thing with us in Nigeria. We, 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 don't, we didn't believe that it is possible that what can it be? Unlike when Ebola, if you remember when Ebola came in, we believed because it was from Africa, we tackled it and we were able to arrest it almost immediately. But with this uh, COVID-19, we didn't believe it. We didn't believe it. And so our personality was that no, 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 we, we are too, we, we are not like that. It's not going to come to us. It's an American, it's a white man's infection. So our behavior towards it was also that of denial. We didn't, we didn't do anything about it until it started killing members. When it started killing us, then we said, ah, yes, this thing is real after all. And then we started taking actions towards it. Um, in Nigeria, you find because we, we now believe our government, our government is not sleeping. I must tell you that our president and the Various state governments, they are all working towards the, to curtail this COVID-19. They share things. They, I know of uh, some that have helped Kasson, as some states that are really helping Kasson. Even in Delta State, where my star Maria is, their government there is working hard. River State is another government that is working hard in uh, solving this problem. So I think, uh, I don't know if I've answered your question between... Yeah. The, the, so yeah. the other question, um, 
we will encourage uh, you, you will give us your phone number and how we can reach the counseling association. Um, if you have it now, we can share it on screen. If you give us and the I, if, if I go back to my slides, I can get some there. Because I thought we were to talk for just 10 minutes. I was rushing and I got so many you, points. You did, you, did very, you did very well because we have seven more minutes to go. Uh -huh. But if I can quickly go back to my slide, I can get out the numbers or oh, she can, whoever is interested yeah, can see the numbers. numbers for us, um, while um, Dr. Ibuibuike Michael will take this question, and I think there are too many questions, we may have to take two more. Um, so let's go to Dr. Uh, Ibuibuike Wesley. Um, I, I think this question was well crafted for you. <laughs> I don't know how you in mind. Um, but let me go back to what Dr. Mrs. Uh, Maria Okocha talked about uh, people living in denial and people don't want to believe it. They live in denial because uh, they want to continue their life the way uh, it is. Um, I, I can relate with that because people don't want to give up their freedom that easily. People don't want to engage in, a, in, in change uh, even at old age. So. The easiest way to go is um, for people to not to believe it. Now, bringing this in the realm of faith and the kind of people we are, um, and also how things have worked for us in the past. Um, Doctor uh, Professor Abu Tuku talked about that Nigerians are very resilient, and we fought Ebola hands down. Now, looking at COVID nineteen, I think that resilience. It's still showing up. We are we are feeling COVID nineteen down. Uh, our death, death percentage is about two to three percent compared to six percent that you have in most other countries. Uh, this charge rate is high, um, and um, so so there are so many things that are accounting for us. Which, in my opinion, I would say is because we are resilient people. Now back to you, Doctor Igwebike uh, Wese. Um, how do you relate with this issue of faith and denial? Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, first of all, I want to give a shout out to uh, Honorable Olamide Davis. How are you? I think <laughs> I know we met about two years ago at the, at the Nigeria House. Um, all right, go just to say that it. it it's so funny that you said that that question was kind of crafted by me because I'm sure once in a while I reach out to you and I'm always a bit um, uncomfortable with the role of the churches. But you see, the church is doing such a wonderful job. And I think that that's where Mrs. Ibojuku, uh, from my opinion, needs to start from. Because the churches, for example, have taken on the job of therapists and counselors. That's what they actually do. There, there is no way to have that balance of saying, this is where my preaching stops and this is where therapy st starts from. You know, they, they, most people, when they have problems, they go to the pastor. That's really the practice in Nigeria, which is a bit, which is different from here in the United States. They do that though here, but there's a big difference in terms of when you have problems, and you know that this problem, that there are professionals who can solve this problem and God created them too, different from the advice the pastor is going to give to you. So if we're able to know that, and that's a very difficult balance to play, but here in Africa, Nigeria specifically, uh, pastors are the therapists and they are the counselors and it's like a one-shot deal, they do everything. So that's the problem. But if you're able to get into somebody who you observe is a person of faith, you must recognize that person's faith. Otherwise, you're going to lose them right away. And that's the first thing that we do as therapists, as professionals. It's all about what they want. If they need help, you know, so the beginning of the psychological first aid that we offer them is to make sure that whatever we're going to say to them, they have the ability to receive it. So if you observe, and that's where our observation comes in as a therapist. Once you observe that this person is a person of faith, true questions you're going to ask, you must be able to know 
how to go about it. If they are speaking to the pastor, whoever they are speaking to, and also advise them that God also created, you know, all these therapies that are here because having a problem is one thing. Going about it for survival is another. Because that's where we ask questions. Why do people commit suicide? What leads somebody to really commit suicide? If, if, and as Christians, Christians do that. Why do Christians actually commit suicide? Because the steps that they are to take to alleviate that particular problem that is causing them extreme stress, they are not able to surmount it. That's why we as therapists are trained to know how to go about it. So it's very, very important that counselors individualize everyone they meet. One shoe does not fit all. That's really the profession. Anybody you meet, you must individualize that person and you must make sure that if the person is in pain of faith, you must respect their faith, even as you are practicing your counseling skills. That's what I think I can bring. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Wifei. Um, my take home here is that two things. One, you must individualize. Yes. So in other words, I don't know if I'm correct, that means you shouldn't generalize. Am I correct? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So we must individualize. Okay, now... I respect their faith, yes. I respect their faith. Now, Dr. Wifei, uh, individualize and respect their faith. And because of their faith, they don't want to maintain social distancing. And they are, they are putting you in danger. How do you now respect the faith and how do you now individualize? Don't, don't forget that our job is not to solve the problem at all costs. That's where there is a, a partnership. By the way, I'm reading up on something that we're trying to change. In the, we, we no longer call it, it social distancing because it's been associated with a lot of things. We're calling it now uh, physical distancing because social distancing is another word. So, but, uh, but that one is for another day. I think to answer your question, in order to do that, you must know. Of course, we therapists know that for, for you to offer help, they have to need help themselves. So there's nothing you can do. They have to want help for you to also help them. You cannot impose whatever you're trying to tell them. So it's a give and take. That's why... Sometimes you succeed, sometimes you don't. But most times, it's the art of how you come about it. That's why therapists have to continue to, be, to update themselves. This is a trying period for everyone right now, including therapists. Therapists are grappling with what to do right now. So only the strong, so it's not a matter of saying, this is what I know, this is what I'm going to do. No, this is a new environment for everyone. So you have to go back to school, pick it up again, and begin to look for additional ways. What works in the United States may not work in, um, in Nigeria. That's why we're looking at, because everybody and the Honorable Olamide actually said it very well. We are having a different emotional problem here, trust me. With the stimulus package and everything, many businesses are going to close down, but some businesses will survive. Government is giving uh, some businesses money to do things. In Nigeria, it's different. Many businesses will never reopen. They have to learn to fend for themselves. So that's a different problem and trauma that they're going to face. That that's the emotional problem that they're going to have. So how it's being done is left for the counseling association to come together and say, how do we develop this new area that is happening to us? Thank you very much, uh, Michael. Uh, uh, the, um, yes. I, I like that, you know, you, you talked about um, the challenges and everything, and you talked about the economic challenges. Anyway, uh, there are so many, many questions on the line. We'll just take one more question, and then we'll, we'll have each and every one of you give us just one minute closing uh, statement. So let's take one more question. The other questions, we're going to post them on the website, and then um, we are going to answer the questions and put them on the website for our audience to go and see. So let's take one more question. Dr. Adeneke is
Dr. Mrs. Okocha, she said something about how we need to take care of people um, who after COVID-19 should be celebrated as heroes because COVID-19 is a war. These are people who went to war and they came back victorious. If you decide to celebrate them, then we will see the value in what they did. So uh, back to you, um, Prof. Ibochuku. Do I need to get back that question or you got it at the time that the question was asked? No, 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 I didn't get it. Okay, I'm going to read out the question to you again. Okay, so, yeah. What can be done to prepare counseling psychology to handle the growing number of clients online? Yes, a growing number of clients online. So what can be done to prepare the counseling psychologists to handle the great number of clients online. Um, you are the president of CASON, uh, and like we know, uh, online counseling is the order of the day. Um, so, but um, Dr. Adeleke is asking that the number is growing, people are growing. So, what program can you put in place uh, and pr to prepare the growing number of um, uh, counsel or counseling services that are required online? How do you prepare your people? Thank you. Can you permit me, though, before I answer this question, to yes. address the... Yeah. Um, something, uh, Dr. Wesley, Michael, in uh, the schools now, in the university, we have many priests coming in to study counseling psychology. We have very many, especially the Catholic Reverend Fathers, so many come in. So what they are now doing when they go back to the churches is proper counseling, not the church one anymore. We have, I think most churches now have trained counselors as priests, even in the Anglican churches too. I think that has answered that. Then um, what can be done to prepare for uh, online counseling? You find we do give seminars we do give workshops from time to time so we are going to train more already while teaching our students we tell them about telephone counseling online counseling because we are we are in it area uh, era so we do teach them that and um, we are going to do more in that area by giving more seminars and workshops on counseling, online counseling, right? Then you also asked for, yeah. yeah. Please go ahead. I was going to now quickly give, share the numbers before we forget. Okay. Uh, or should I wait later you call me to no, share? No, no, please, let's share the numbers. Okay. Give Have us the number. Here. Okay. Zero eight zero three. Number. Yeah. Numbers, okay. 0803. Yeah. Level 19. Okay. 0802. Okay. Then we have 0808. Yeah. 8606. 8306. 277. Okay. 277. Okay, yeah. let, let me read out the numbers very clearly. 0808. Okay. No, 03. 08, 0803. I know. I'm, I'm reading the, 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 the letter one. The second one. Oh, the okay, one. okay, okay. 0803. Okay. 0803. Okay. 0803. 719-0802 and then yes. the second one is 0808-836-0627. Yes. Beautiful. Now, uh, from, no, the, the, the second uh, one is wrong. The second one is okay, 08-0808. Okay. 
appreciate you again once more because um i am excited that such a thing is happening in nigeria we are growing we are growing covid 19 or no covid 19 we will survive it and uh, counselors we are doing everything in our power to make sure that nigeria comes out clean and stronger thank you very much thank you thank you very much dr mrs uh, mario kocha uh, your closing statement in one minute I want to say that safety begins with you and the ultimate responsibility for your safety rests on no one else but you. Keep safe. Thank you very much. Um, Honorable Olamide Davis Talabi, um, I'll give you one and a half minutes for your closing. Um, once again, thank you for this platform. Dr. Michael, hi, good to see you on this, um, on this, on this platform. All right, how are you? <laughs> so my thing is this I'm begging the spiritual leaders in Nigeria to work alongside the, go the government you know I've seen so many cases whereby the government says don't go out and the pastors and the imams they call people to come to church and we know how we Africans, really Nigerians how we see the church and the, the mosque, we want to go to church you know, especially come from our leaders. So I'm begging, I'm, I'm pleading that the spiritual leaders work with the government in, in this, um, during this pandemic, and let's just work, work together in, in the same accord. So when they say stay home, let us stay home. End service at this time, let us end service at this time. And to so everyone watching, reach out to somebody, check out their, um, how they're doing, and just say something nice to them. We, we will overcome. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, um, Dr. Igobi Kewese, um, your closing statement for 60 seconds. All right. Did, did you take off my video? Can you see me? Uh, we can see you. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. All right. Uh, that, that's fine. I really want to thank everybody. Uh, what an honor to be here. This is a very wonderful um initiative whereby we are facing lots of adversity and uh, insecurity in our nation especially nigeria i i am very i'm highly sympathetic because the the areas of choice the fear anxiety panic depression all these are part of stress but you know when stress is heightened then it becomes a major problem and that's what we are talking about. I, I just hope that um, we begin to find a level in that country whereby um, there is a balance. I don't know, as we're having difficulty in uh, on the, the with the IT right now. I'm asking myself, how are they going to be doing this online counseling? How successful is it going to be? That's really what, it's like everything that we've done wrong in the past is really showing up now. But what can we do moving forward? It's just uh, something that we have to do. So I, I really want to enjoy everyone here. It's very, very important that what we're doing is something that, has not been done before we really it's very very important because on, and until you get into it and uh, uh, being a therapist is more of a calling actually to be a therapist uh, of course it's not a really money making area but you really have to be there for humanity that's really what i will enjoy those who are in the counseling area to do because it's a very difficult thing it's like uh, building a foundation, building anything you're doing, 
the success that we enjoy in this and over here when we deal with people with mental illnesses when you see them get better that's really the success that's really what makes us happy at the end of the day somebody just picked up from somewhere nobody having mental issues but at the end of the day is even able to meet up have a family and begin to have a career that's really what makes us happy as a therapist so this journey is huge so i'm going to thank everybody for being part of it thank you Thank you, Dr. Wensi. Uh, you took up your 60 minutes, 60 seconds, and you took up uh, Honorable Talabi's uh, extra 30 seconds that we didn't use. Anyway, I, I want to thank everybody on this platform. Thank you so much, uh, our listeners. We thank you so much. Uh, for those that we didn't get to answer your questions, please um, log on to the website www.eislco.com and you will get your uh, answers to your questions again www.eisl.com um, tomorrow at 4 p.m we're going to be back here on this platform and then we're going to talk about providing help for people with disabilities under COVID-19 and of course we are going to have Dr. Iwobike Michael as the main speaker for that event who happens to be the CEO and founder of Hope for Now um, from the international. Uh, we are also going to have uh, Jake Epele on as uh, a main speaker at the event. Jake Epele is the founder of Albino Foundation here in Nigeria. And then we are going to have uh, a couple of um, people on the sidelines. 4 p.m. tomorrow. Again, my name is Dr. Paul Abolo. I am your host and I thank you so much for tuning in. Take care and God bless.